Hey there, this is Mr. Icarus, and welcome to yet another edition of Doom Mod Madness. Much like last week, we're going to be checking out another map this time round. This is under a freezing sea, and it's very much a map of two halves. The first of which starts you off in an outpost where the alarms are blaring full tilt, alerting you to the fact that something somewhere has gone very very wrong. It's then up to you to trek across the frozen tundra here back to the base and just make sure that someone hasn't fallen asleep on the console, which as we know is very unlikely because this is doom and things inevitably do go to hell. Before it reaches that point, however, this map does engage in some rather effective atmospherics, presenting you with a largely deserted base, save for a few dead bodies, and even has a bit of time to play a few tricks on you. I will say, however, that the ambient noise during this section could probably have done with a little bit of work. There was just this constant droning tone that, more than anything, reminded me of the noise that my vacuum cleaner makes when I'm hoovering the hallway and then I try to hum along with it, and that's honestly what I ended up doing for a first section of this. But I digress, there's other neat stuff that this part of the map also does, such as the inclusion of underwater sections, and I do feel that across a lot of Doom maps, underwater sections are pretty underutilized, and I acknowledge there's a few reasons for that, but what this achieves is pretty cool. You've got these various vents that are dotted around, allowing you to refill your oxygen during the course of a dive. However, if you want to know how much oxygen you got left, you're gonna have to rely on the likes of maybe a head-up display mod that actually displays an oxygen meter because otherwise you're just going to be running on guesswork here. The other thing you're going to have to look out for during the course of a dive is the prospect of fighting off killer sharks. And the first time around I did this, I was actually quite startled by a shark attacking me because they do blend in quite well with the colors of the underwater surroundings, which I guess kind of mirrors the way sharks operate in real life. That said, they didn't have lasers attached to their heads, which is a little bit of a disappointment, but hey, a man can dream. Eventually though, you will find your way to the power switch and you anticipate a fight and it doesn't happen. Which keeps you on edge. Which is a really great touch. Eventually though, this map stops playing mind games with you and oh god, does it go from zero to fuck you. Jesus Christ, this is unrelenting. This section of the level is just concerned with one thing and one thing only, and that is roundly kicking you in the testicles. Because every direction that you go here is just full of hot liquid death. You go one way, it's a face full of chain gunners. You go the other way, it's a room full of cacos. Maybe a sprinkling of revenants, just for good measure. And don't even get me started on those weird things hanging from the ceiling that casually vomit at you every now and again. They're not great either. They're just a pain in the ass. In fact, this entire section of the level is a colossal pain in the ass. Okay, I'm just gonna just gonna calm myself here, just take a step back because it's better to come at this a little bit more rationally, to try and figure out what the component parts of this level are that make it so just messy to play. Granted, there is that element of going from zero to fuck you. That is whiplash, pure and simple. You go from pure atmospherics to in-your-face, projectile-laden, chain-gunner-sprinkled mayhem. It's honestly a situation that gives you zero time to think. All you can do is react. All you can do is hold down that fire button, pick a direction, get moving, and hope you can weave yourself through all of the crap that's headed your way. And, and maybe, just maybe, carve yourself out a little bit of a foothold in this level where you can then stop, breathe, think, and plan. It's exhausting. It really, really is. I mean, just getting to this point that you're seeing in the video right now took many, many quick saves and many, many quick loads. When you get right down to it, it's simply a case of big chunks of enemies in spaces that aren't really generous enough to deal with it. 
I mean, case in point right here, this small clump of enemies essentially has me bottlenecked in this lift. And in this case, it's actually the best way to deal with it, because as soon as I step outside, this room will pull my attention in multiple directions at once. You've got awkward enemies in high vantage points, such as chain gunners. You've got the occasional revenant with the homing projectiles. And yes, you did indeed spot an arch vial. I mean, I can take a guess at the style of play, just constantly keeping you on the move, but you gotta pace it. You really do, and I think that's something that this level sorely needs. Now, after the inclusion of the underwater section in the opening half of this map, I was actually looking forward to seeing what the latter half was going to do with them. And as you can see, the underwater sections are very much present and accounted for here, but I'd say that they feel very much optional. They're something that you can quite possibly avoid entirely during this latter half, and I was hoping they'd be a bit more of an essential way to progress, because I, I like the mechanics, I like the fact that you can recharge your oxygen on these bubble vents, and that they give you a slightly different style of play, they mix it up a bit, but it turns out that some sections of this are just as overstuffed with enemies as the above water sections, and you can often end up leaving this with less health and resources than you dove in with. But don't get me wrong, I still feel that this is a really, really neat inclusion, one that I hope to see much more of in future maps, but here, yeah, I could take it or leave it. It's something that, as I said, didn't feel essential, and yeah, just felt as frantic as the above water sections with the inclusion of a lot of enemies. A lot of enemies. Maybe just dial it back to the sharks. Maybe give a few of them lasers on their heads. You know, I'm not gonna let that drop. I'm really not gonna let that drop. Where are my sharks with frickin' lasers on their heads? Anyway, I feel like it's about time I finally show you the absolute worst room in the entire map, and that would be this. Just in case you can't tell what's going on, and I wouldn't blame you for the shitload of fuck that's contained within that, there are at least three Hades elementals. There's one Archvile, several Hell Knights, and at least one Mancubus. And that's just visible. That's just visible through that doorway. You know that problem I was mentioning earlier about things becoming a bit of a bottleneck and that's the only viable way to deal with certain things? That, that, that is this. That is this. I mean, I'm not sure it was intended to be that way because I think I rumbled that something was going to go down and backed out of the room before everything would spawn. So, haha, <laughs> Icarus 1, room full of fuck zero. But I can kind of conceive how this room is supposed to play out. I mean, I can see the soul sphere, I can see the armor at the back. It's clearly intended for you to tank quite a lot of damage during this fight. And there is, of course, a submerged section you can dive into, which I think did contain some additional bed packs. And if you're very canny, there is a secret switch down there which does uncover an invincibility sphere. So if you're having a hard time with this one, and I assume most of you will, Go, go find that invincibility sphere, have yourself a nice time, just, just, just kill everything. But yeah, I think it's safe to say overall this map isn't quite my speed. I mean, I very much enjoyed the opening, it was a very nice setup, very atmospheric. It's just that for something called Under a Freezing Sea, it has absolutely no chill when it comes to introducing you to the action. It is just utterly unrelenting. So, would I recommend under a freezing sea. It's, uh, it's certainly not going to be for everyone. I feel like it's a little needlessly padded with the overabundance of enemies crammed into rooms that aren't really big enough to handle them. But if you're in the mood for a map that isn't afraid to slap you around a bit, then under a freezing sea is certainly going to fit the bill. To that end, if you're interested in giving this a whirl for yourself, you'll find the link, as usual, in the description below. While I'm at it, I'd like to give a great big thank you to my wonderful patrons over on Patreon. Thank you so very much for supporting the channel and for helping to make content like this possible. If you're interested in lending a hand yourself, maybe you'd like to see your name in the credits, maybe you'd like to gain early access to my videos before anyone else. If that's the case, you'll find the link to my Patreon page also in the description below. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video, feel free to let me know what you thought in the comments, and feel free to suggest any mod you'd like to see me cover in future episodes of Doom Mod Madness. This has been Mr. Icarus, thank you very much for watching. Icarus out.